Hey, what is going on, guys? This is ZK, and welcome to a video today where I'll be showing you how to use some cylinders and terrain patches in Radiant for building your maps. Now, cylinders and terrain patches are really cool to get to learn how to do those kinds of things because it adds a uh, much better, uh, I don't know how to say it, like a, a better feel to the map when you can have some, some rounded edges and various things like that. Why is Radiant taking so long to open? Good grief. Um, yeah, I've been having some computer problems, guys, lately. I'm really sorry about not having videos uploaded much. Um, right after I finished Cheesecake Unlimited, this computer just kind of started to uh, to lose it. Uh, the internet very rarely works. As you can see, I'm connected right now, but it usually doesn't work. Um, but anyway, we're going... Ah, uh, we don't need to open a map. Um, so let's just put a floor down really quick. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use curve patches and um, terrain, uh, like, uh, cylinders. Um, so basically a cylinder, in case you don't know, is like is a circle. It's like it's a, you know, like what you'd see with a pipe or something, or a cord laying on the ground or whatever. That's a cylinder. A curve patch is where you can actually take a solid brush like this and like curve it and make it so it's kind of wavy. Or you'll see what I mean when we get into it. So we're just going to use this as our floor, just so that we can kind of remember which way is up and which way is down. Da 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 da. da. And just uh, do this. There we go. Okay, so. Um, we want to make, let's start off with a cylinder. So I'll show you how to do that. First off, you want to draw um, a square that is going to be about the size that you want your cylinder to be. So I'm going to draw this square, like so. Just get it up off the ground here. Um, then you want to go to Patch, Primitives, and Cylinder. And this will create a cylinder. So as you can see now, we have a round uh, piece to work with, but it's, you know, there's only one side of it. You know, it's not capped, you don't have... Uh, you know what I mean there. It's like a ring, basically. There's two different things we can do with this ring. Number one, we can go to patch and hit cap. Boom, and now we have it as a, um, like a, basically a giant coin. You can do that, or you can go to patch and hit thicken, and we can actually create a ring. So let's do that. Boom. Now you, so you can see like I have a three-dimensional ring here. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, with these cylinders. If you want to make it thicker, like as you can see, this is how many units that you're going to make it thick. So if I wanted to make it 50 thick, boom, as you can see, it's way thicker than it was the first time I did it. So you can do cool things with that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is obviously you can stretch this however you want to, like so. Um, if you push V on your keyboard, you get the points all over, and you can uh, hold down the left click and drag over one of the points or multiple points. Um, then you hold down Alt on your keyboard and use the left mouse to kind of drag it around. Um, so you can drag the point up and it'll create that kind of a thing. So now, if I was to patch and cap this, we would get this type of a shape. So it gives you a lot of flexibility here working with cylinders to make your map cool by, you know, working with different shapes and things like that. Um, let's see, there was something else with the cylinders. I can't remember what it was at the moment. Oh, yeah, now I remember. Okay, so let's say then that I have a three-dimensional cylinder here. Um, now that it's like this, I can't select it like I can select this. You see how if I shift and left-click on this, I select all the faces and everything? If I try to select this, I only select this face of it. So as you can see, I leave the top and the bottom faces. So if I want to move this object or something, I have to select all the faces in order to move it. Like so. So now I have selected the whole thing and I can move the whole thing. And that's the same with curve patches as well, which we'll get into right now. So now that we have a cylinder, um, like I said, there's tons of things you can do with those cylinders. And really a lot of this is just messing around um, and figuring out how to do things. So to do a curve patch, it's very similar to a terrain patch. Um, whichever way whichever dimension you're viewing here in your 2d view is how it's going to build uh, the curve patch so if I want um, this thing right here to kind of curve like this and I want to make like maybe a wall or something that curves along I'll set this on the ground like so and then I want to probably put it like this in this view so that I can ha look at it like this in my two-dimensional view so I go to patch and I'll hit simple curve patch and right here are the dimensions basically like how many uh, points that I want to have to be able to edit on this curve patch. So for this, let's say that I want to make it a curvy wall, I'd probably want to have the width be about 5 and the height at 3. So we'll do that. Now what you're going to see is it's going to turn into uh, like kind of similar to a terrain patch, but you only have one face of it. And I'll show you, it's thickening and capping is basically the same as what we have over there. Um, anyway, so let's say that, like I said before, we're going to make a curvy wall. 
So we have this. We'll use this view because we want the wall to kind of curve like so. Push V on your keyboard while you have your curve patch selected, and there you get the points. So as you can see, we have five points by three points, and that's what I had put in originally when we made the curve patch. So I would want to select all of these points like this, but the easiest way to do it is to do this. Um, and then you're going to hold down Alt and left click, and you can drag the point, and as you can see in your 2D view, your patch is curving and it's automatically creating a new little points all over the place to make it curve instead of just being like one straight V you have a nice curve so then I can take this these points and kinda of move them around and then I can take this and move it out like that boom we have like a curvy wall which is you know it looks really nice so like I said before though we don't have a side we don't have a top we don't have a bottom all we have is this side right here so in order to make this like a three-dimensional object we'd go to patch and you can't really do cap well I guess maybe you could no nah, we're not gonna mess with that right now I, I like to use thicken because thicken allows you to choose how thick you want your wall so let's say we want our wall to be uh, 20 20 units thicker boom there we go now we have a three-dimensional wall just like so these can be very very handy um, my next map, Malibu Drive, if in case you guys didn't know that, is Tony Stark's mansion in, from Iron Man 3. And that map has no brushes yet. I've pretty much built the entire map, like the layout of it, and I have not used one actual solid drawn brush that's all curved patches and cylinders. So these things can be very, very useful in uh, um, working with your map. But, like I said, with the cylinder over here, you have to select all the faces in order to be able to move it. Say, because if I select this and try to move it, I'm just going to be moving that piece. So really, you really want to get your your patch here um, positioned exactly the way you want it before you curve it. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of annoying to have to move around. You know, when you go around and select all the different faces of it. So anyway, that has been curve patches and cylinders, the very basics of them. Um, you, really, guys, you're, they're going to seem kind of glitchy to you at first. You're not really going to know, um, you know how they all work 100%. It really takes a lot of experience, and I don't even know how they work 100%. Um, one thing I would like to point out is once you have thickened it, if you select all of it, you can push V on your keyboard, and you will get all the points back, and you can continue to edit the wall like so. But... You know, it is. you are going to have to select all the faces. You know what I'm saying? So I can edit the wall just like so by selecting all of it. And same with the cylinder if I wanted to do that. Whee! Like that. So anyway, guys, that has been Cylinders and Terrain Patches. I hope this helps you to build a cool-looking map. Um, you know, try not to use too many regular brushes if you don't have to because bo maps can very easily tend to be very boxy and square um, and when you can add some curve and some some roundness to the map, it can add a lot to it. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I have some gameplays planned for this week and next week on some games that I've <laughs> kind of wanted to be playing. Um, but we'll see how it goes, how this computer holds up. Um, my new one I'm supposed to get sometime here in July. So we'll hope that that comes as soon as possible. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you on my next video. This is ZK, signing off.